The best kind of love is one that takes you by surprise. Meet Stefan Fuchs, a German marine researcher who fell in love with a Maasai warrior and also decided to move in with him, leaving all the comfort and good life she had into the wilderness of Tanzania to start a family. Hello everyone, welcome back to another amazing video. If you've not yet subscribed, kindly subscribe and enable the bell button so you'll never miss a video from me. If you enjoy this video, kindly give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Okay, Stephanie, why? Why? <laughs> why am I here? Yeah. <laughs> why am I here? Because I fell in love with my husband a beautiful Maasai man and that's why I came here because I thought this was the only way that we could stay together if I followed him here because that's his home and then I stayed even though it was very difficult to adapt to the culture um, but I stayed because I fell in love with also his family his tribe his culture the way of life the environment everything so how was the first days here you know, this is a difficult question because I never kept a diary or anything like that so I have to search back my brain but I remember in one of my first days one of his sisters came to see me because she had heard that he'd come and he has a guest so that's me and I remember one of her sisters she gave me one of these things not these ones but another one that I still have in my house and I looked at her and I thought she was so beautiful and I felt so out of place this white girl with the weird skin that gets sunburned and I looked at all these women and I just thought they were so beautiful and I was just in awe I thought this way of life is perfect the beautiful culture in tune with nature with the animals so this is the first sort of impression that I got that it's so peaceful and in harmony with nature and the people are so welcoming and friendly yeah yeah these are the first impressions that I got Mr. Sokoini and Stefan have been happily married for nine years. They wedded in 2012 and this is how their love story started as written by Stefan. I met Sokoini on the 5th of January 2011 at Utende village on Mafia Island off the coast of Tanzania. I was working as a research assistant for a marine conservation project and Sokoini was working as a security guard at a local dive center. What is the thing you love the most about the Maasai culture and you make your life here? I'm gonna, I'm gonna cry when I say this. Um, what I love the most about the Maasai culture is the Maasai, is the people. It's their like really beautiful, beautiful hearts and they're like <laughs> good nature, peaceful, so calm and so like in tune with themselves, yeah? So different than so many of uh, us Western people. That's the first thing, like really amazing people. Second thing is they are one of our planet's last remaining indigenous tribes. If we need to redo this because I'm crying, we can redo this. Yeah. Depends on you. I like it because it's true. Yeah. So they are one of our planet's last remaining indigenous tribes. So just this, it gives them, because I know what this means, but they don't know what it means actually. And this is also one of the things, oh God, I think we have to redo this because I'm like crying. Why are you crying? Because it means a lot to me, yeah. so much. Yeah. And because I think they're amazing in so many different ways, I'm crying too much. <laughs> but it's like not from the sadness, right? No, because it means it's like it means so much to me. It means everything to me. Because I know what they mean in this world. They're conservationists. They know how to live in tune with nature. So if you gave the world to them, the world would still be intact. We wouldn't have all the issues that we have if everyone lived like a Maasai and everyone had this sort of traditional knowledge that they have to live in tune with nature. They respect nature, they cherish nature and this by itself makes them also better people. Shortly after I and my fellow volunteers arrived at our research camp, I went for a walk around the village to check out the surroundings. I had already spent a year on another research camp on mainland Tanzania, close to Silios Game Reserve and I was fluent in Swahili, the national language of this beautiful country. I had already fallen in love with Tanzania. I had fallen in love with these wonderful people and amazing wilderness. Do you think the white woman from outside, from you are from Frankfurt? 
Yes. They're from the big city, so you made like a huge transition in your life. You think like the woman like you with your background can actually be like 100% Maasai for them. No, I don't think I will ever be seen by them as completely one of them. Never. But I've had this and I made actually a post about this also because someone asked me that question before. It's a very interesting question because I don't even feel the need for me to be 100% Maasai because I know I won't be. I am white, I stand out, I come from a different culture, I have certain ideas that are different, for example, uh, what it means to be a woman, the, the status of a woman in a society, all that sort of thing. But because they know that I respect their culture, they respect me and they see me as one of them, they like me because I speak their language, I live like one of them, they see that I respect their culture because I also live within their culture, so they see me to a certain extent as being one of them and they treat me as one of them. But I know always, 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 I'll always be also the different one. Not an outsider, but I'll be the different one and I'll always be that. But I said also, this different doesn't have to be a bad thing. I can also use this different to do good and that's what I try to do. As I took a walk, I bumped into a group of Maasai a people I had heard of before I had come here, but had never been in contact with. An indigenous tribe which was well known for its rich culture defended by fierce warriors. They were three of them, but only saw Sokoine. What attracted me to him were his eyes, his calm steady gaze, which exuded so much peace and confidence. I tried to talk to them in Swahili but they seemed to be in a rush. A few weeks passed and my fascination with Sokoini only grew stronger. But I had too much respect and awe of him and his fellow tribesmen to approach them. I felt that they were not interested in talking to me. They seemed to prefer to stick to themselves. So I let them be. Do you make your husband do the things which normally the Maasai man doesn't do to share some, um, some how to how to say it like, like housework? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I never forced him to do anything he doesn't want to do because I respect his culture. You know, with everything you have to find a balance. For me, also people ask me how do you how do you support the women? I support the women with my projects, with our reusable science kids projects. I support them by talking to them, by encouraging them to speak up, to open their hearts and their minds and to speak up against stuff that they don't like. I do that. But within my marriage, because it won't serve me anything to fight with my husband all the time, because if I had forced upon him those Western values of what women are and what women can do in a relationship, we would not be together anymore. So if I want to live here and I love my husband, everyone has their good sides and their bad sides. So I have to find balance. So in our relationship, there are certain things that he does, which other Maasai men don't do. Like he's very close to our son, for example. But when I first had my son also, he didn't help me anything. He was a proper Maasai man. And that was really, 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 really difficult. I knew it was going to be like that, but it was still more difficult than I imagined. But we got over this and um, he is now super involved with our son and in other ways also he helps me a little bit more than other Maasai and he don't, doesn't ask me to do things that I don't want to do. So in certain ways, yes, he has adapted a little bit but it was never something that I forced upon him. It was something that he saw himself if we are be, to be together because he loves me also. That's also a big difference. I love him, he loves me. So of course you're going to find a way of being together and there's certain little things that he does that he has adapted. But one day a local friend of mine told me, as we were sitting in a restaurant in the village, and Sokoini walks through the door, Oh, look, there comes your Maasai. And I ask him, astounded, what? Why do you call him my Maasai? And he says, oh, you don't know? That's because he likes you. A few days later, Sokoini and I got talking because I was finally brave enough to speak to him and tell him how I feel. And 11 months later, she moved in with him with his extended family into his traditional house called Boma in the wilderness of Tanzania. This is my house. Dad, 
Can we enter your house? Sure. But it's really messy. It's fine. <laughs> and Mr. Fay, big hair is a couple of rooms. This is my bedroom. Okay. Some privacy, let's keep. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where I cook. Your kitchen? Yes. I have a gas stove. We don't see a lot because it's dark, so yes. no problem. <laughs> and here? And here is where we eat. You eat here. Yeah. You don't cook outside? It's effort. The women sometimes cook outside. Okay. Because they cook with the firewood. Yeah, for the smoke when yeah. you're cooking inside the house. Okay. To get rid of the smoke. Thank you. <laughs> and this one is my mother-in-law's house. She's your favorite person, right? I love her so much. She's just the nicest, kindest, calmest, super intelligent person. And she supports me in everything I do. From the moment I came to this boma, she's always by my side. I'm gonna get like emotional talking about this. I love her so much. She's amazing. And she's like close to 60, but still working so hard. You step on the shit. But yeah. on my side, it's not shit, it's just the cow dung. It's not shit. <laughs> this one is my second mother-in-law, whose house you just seen also. Because sanitary pads are rare in that area, Stefan has taught women on how to make reusable sanitary pads. But I lived with the Maasai now for nearly nine years and this I started in the last two years because I realized that really the Maasai women have no way of dealing with their period. They don't deal with it at all, they don't wear anything. They don't wear underwear, they don't wear cloths. Maybe if they have to go somewhere during their period, maybe they stuff they wear another extra cloth if they have underwear because most of them don't. If they have underwear, they maybe stuff it with leaves. Most of the time it's like free flow and it's a major issue because they tell me. They told me that they go to ceremonies and then they sit on a motorbike and they get off at the place where they go to the ceremony and there's like a red stain on their cloth. I started this, we did this because it's sustainable because the lady knows how to make them herself, Sendo, my sister-in-law, so she gets an income from this and then we distribute them within the community or we sell them within the community. So it's sustainable. So we call it a kit because it has eight of these liners or pads, whatever you like to call them. And then it has two of these. Clip onto your underwear. We also have two pairs of underwear in there because often also this is an issue for the women to get it. So you take your liner, which you just fold, one, two, and you put it in here into your pad which clips on two and it sits like this like a normal pad pads you are buying right yes these are we are buying and it, once you use it you just take it out then because you've got a kit a whole bag you just take another one and put it in there even if you can't don't have time to wash it or maybe they have a water issue don't have water right now you can just put it into a bag fold it away somewhere and then use another one and then later you can wash it so you have eight so even if you use two or three you still have five of them so it's enough for your whole period 